So we're going to go over anatomical positions, anatomical directions, anatomical planes. We're going to go over a whole lot of vocab in the beginning. What you first need to realize is that functional anatomy, more than anything, is just a language. And like learning any language at first, it's not going to make any sense. And then as you get more words together, you start seeing how everything fits, and you start realizing that there's a logic behind anatomy. Hopefully by the end of the day, you guys are going to start to put some big groups of pieces together and you'll be like, oh yeah, this isn't just a bunch of random words in Latin. All right, so let's start with anatomical position. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand in the anatomical position. Oh yeah, so that's eyes facing forward. I don't know why they have to specify eyes, but they do. Palms forward, right? Feet forward. Is this ideal posture? No, obviously we do not walk around with our palms forward. It'd be a little weird. And I hope you use your eyes to track more than the things directly in front of you. But what is anatomical position good for? It's a reference point. So when we start talking about muscles, at least initially, Right, you guys got to learn joint actions. You guys have heard the term joint actions before. Right, so when we talk about joint actions, what joint action a muscle will cause, we're generally talking about from this position initially. Does that make sense? When we talk about something called anatomical directions, we're generally referring to where something is based on your body being in anatomical position. Does that make sense? Everybody, one more time, show me anatomical position. Ingrain it in your mind, etch it, laser it, build an app for it, something. All right, next, you guys can go ahead and sit. Anatomical directions. How many of you guys have heard of anatomical directions before? How many of you guys have heard of directions before? How many of you guys have given directions before? How many of you guys just gave up and went GPS? No? All right, so. Directions, we need directions in the human body just like we need directions to get someplace. We just use a little different words. So let's start with the first two. Each one of these is in pairs. So we got superior and inferior. Well, if I tell you that your boss is superior to you, what does that mean? Above, and in the human body, superior means the same thing. Superior means above. If you hire on an intern and you're the boss, your intern is what? Inferior to you, right? Which means below. Probably not a good thing to tell your intern. That's not going to help their confidence any. But you guys get superior versus inferior, right? So superior might be in this direction. Inferior is going to be in this direction, generally, if we're talking from the anatomical position. We're going to play a little game here in a second. Medial versus lateral. What does medial sound like? Middle, so where would the middle of your body be? Yeah, directly down the center line, right? What about lateral? What do, what do you guys do that has the word lateral in it? Raise your arm. How many of you guys do lateral raises? Nobody's done a lateral raise? I don't have that many gym rats in here yet. Right, some lateral raises for your shoulders. Lateral raises are in which direction? Towards the outside, right? So lateral is the opposite of medial and is toward the outside. All right, anterior and posterior. Anybody ever been told to sit on their posterior? Has anybody ever been told that? <laughs> Good, I'm glad I wasn't the only one growing up. Sit on your posterior, right? <laughs> Where's your posterior? Your backside. So what do you guys think anterior means? Front. Anterior and posterior delt, right? Where's your anterior delt? Everybody touch your anterior delt. Palpate. Everybody knows what the definition of palpate is? To touch in a professional manner. Um, posterior delt is where? Everybody palpate their posterior delt. Good, 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 good. These are probably the tricky ones. Proximal and distal. How many of you guys have heard these terms before? All right, proximal. And what does that word sound like? Proximity. Proximity means what? 
close. Now the question is close to what? What are we talking about being close to? Well, in the human body, it's the trunk. Right? You could think of putting a little bullseye right here, right over your belly button. All right, so it's in proximity to this. Now, distal sounds like what word? Distance. So now we've got to think, what's the furthest distance from this proximal point? What would be the furthest, furthest things from this? Fingers and toes, right? You almost have to think of proximal and distal if your body was like this. Does that make sense? And then we have supine and prone. You guys know these? Right, so supine, face or palm up when lying on back. So the way I was told, told, bleh, taught how to remember this is if you hold a bowl of soup, right, you are at supine. And then if you pro it out, oh, it's only going to get cheesier. I know that was bad, right, wasn't it? All right, so everybody supine, pro, good. All right, so everybody's got their anatomical directions. You guys think you got this? All right, stand up. Because now we get to play a really fun game. It's called Brent Says. That's why I think it's a fun game. Anyway, well, why are we going to play Brent Says? Because actually it's really annoying to say Simon Says after every direction that I give you. So here's what I want you guys to do. Touch the posterior aspect of your head. Good. Touch the anterior aspect of your head. Good. What, what, so now we're on your face, right? Let's, let's do the lateral aspect of your face. Good. Didn't get anybody yet. Medial aspect of your face. Your nose would be medial. Could you have touched here too? Yeah, that's still midline. What about here? All right, so we all got, we got medial down. Good, let's do the superior portion of your face. Proximal portion of your face. Oh, got you. Got you, where's proximal portion of your face? What's proximal mean? Closer to the torso, right? So this would be the proximal portion of your face. What would be the inferior portion of your face. Same spot, right? Same spot. What would be the distal portion of your face? All right. Let's mix this up a little bit. Let's mix this up. What do I got for you guys? Let's do uh, medial trunk. Good. Superior shoulder. Posterior thigh. Anybody else feel like they're playing like anatomy twister? Like I just, <laughs> just kind of realized that. We need like a little spin thing. All right, let's do lateral trunk. Let's do proximal arm. Yeah, this would be your proximal arm, like your shoulder. Right. Let's do distal arm. Anterior thigh. All right. Let's do inferior shoulder. <laughs> got a couple of you. I started mixing up the pairs and I got a couple of you already. How you guys doing though? You still getting it? Should we really take it up a notch? How many of you guys are ready for like groupings? You guys ready for groupings? Touch your, you can think about this one for a second. Remember this ain't Jeopardy. No points for answering first. Where's your anterolateral, anterior and lateral trunk? Yeah, so I'd be referring to anything here, right? Anterolateral. All right, let's do posteromedial head. Everybody feel that bump on the back of their head? You guys ready for a fancy word? It's called your external occipital protuberance. Right there. You guys got that? Anybody know what muscle inserts into that? None? Nobody? Your traps? All right, come up to your external occipital protuberance. That's just... 
A little prelude to what's to come, guys. Um, let's do, oh, I like this one. Let's do the dorsal. Did I explain dorsal? I didn't explain dorsal. How did I not explain dorsal? So I told you guys you got anterior and posterior, right? Occasionally, you guys are going to hear reference to other anatomical directions, like ventral or dorsal. Ventral generally means forward. Dorsal, what does that word sound like? You guys know a word that has dorsal in it. Dorsal fin, right? Like on a shark, like jaws, <laughs> right? Like the dorsal fin, dun, 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 right? So you got the dorsal fin, where is that located on an animal? Back or top surface. Where you'll also hear dorsal referred to as like the top surface of something, like your foot. All right, so I'm gonna give, I kind of gave, gave away the next one, but I'm gonna still make you do it anyway. I want you guys to touch the dorsal aspect of your distal, everybody still with me? Lower extremity. You can immediately tell who has flexible hamstrings in this room because about two thirds of you went like this and then like a third of you went, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do the posterior and proximal aspects, posterior, proximal aspect of your lower extremity. Yeah, that's right, I got you all palpating your glutes. What? What, we'll find out later why the glutes are my favorite muscle. It's true, it's true. There's a big functional reason for that. All right, you guys can sit. You guys think you got anatomical directions down? A little bit? That help out?